So we are going to prove that field extension automorphisms map roots to roots. A special case of this is that the Galois group will map roots of polynomials to other roots. Let's look at the setup. We start with some field F and an extension field E. We're going to consider a function F which has coefficients in the base field F. Now, we will consider an element phi that is in the automorphism group of E over F. Now, what does this mean? It means we're taking an automorphism of the field E that fixes F. So phi is in the automorphism group of E and phi restricted to the base field F is the identity function. So it leaves elements of the base field F unchanged. Now we have this function f, which is in this base field polynomial ring. What we're going to do is consider some element r, which is in the extended field e, and we're going to ask what is phi of f of r? Well, in order to do that, let's first make this polynomial a little bit more concrete. Of course, we can write any polynomial in terms of powers of x. So let's say the first term is a sub n x to the power of n. And then after that, we'll have a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, and so on all the way down to a 0 being the constant term. So we want to ask, what is phi of f of r? Well, f of r is just this, except that we plug in this value r being an element of e into the function. So we're looking at phi of a sub n r to the n plus a sub n minus 1 r to the n minus 1 plus and so on a1 r and then a0. Now we said at the beginning that phi is an automorphism, so in particular it's a homomorphism. And what that means is first of all that phi of x plus y equals phi of x plus phi of y. So we can either add these elements inside of the phi and then apply phi, or we can apply phi first and then add the results, and those will always be equal. That's one of the properties of a homomorphism. So in this case, we are adding a bunch of terms. We can split this up and apply phi to each term individually. So here I've split up this expression by separating each term individually and applying phi to those all separately. From here, we can do another step, which is that in each of these cases, we are multiplying two things inside of the phi. We have a sub n times r to the n, for example. And one of the other properties of homomorphisms of rings is that phi of x times y is phi of x times phi of y. So in this case, if a sub n is x and r to the n is y, then we can split this up as phi of a sub n times phi of r to the n. And we can do that for all of the other terms as well. So I've gone ahead and written out the separated version of each of these factors. And now we have just a couple more steps to take. First of all, remember that one of these stipulations for phi being an automorphism of this field extension is that phi restricted to the base field f is the identity function. Now, our polynomial f is a polynomial with coefficients in the base field f. So if phi restricted to f is the identity, then phi applied to any of the coefficients is going to be the identity as well. In particular, a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub 1, a sub 0, those are all coefficients in the base field. So phi of a sub i is just equal to a sub i. So we can go ahead and remove the application of phi to the coefficients because applying phi to an element of the base field doesn't do anything. And finally, if we look at phi of r to the n, well r to the n is just r times r times r a bunch of times, and we know that phi of xy equals phi of x phi of y. So in this case, we can bring the power of n to the outside because phi of r times r times r is the same as phi of r times phi of r times phi of r. So phi of r to the n is the same as phi of r, and then we raise this result to the power of n. So this is our final simplification. We have that phi applied to f of r is equal to a sub n times phi of r to the n 
plus a sub n minus one times phi of r to the n minus one, and so on, all the way down to a one phi of r plus a zero. Now, if we take a look at this last line and we compare it to the definition of f of x using these powers of x, we can see that it's actually the same. We have a sub n times something to the power of n, a sub n minus one times something to the power of n minus one, and so on. The only difference is, in this case, the input to the polynomial is x, and in this case, the input to the polynomial is phi of r in all of those cases. So this is actually the polynomial f applied to the input phi of r. And what we found now is that phi of f of r equals f of phi of r. And now we get to the point of the video, which is we want to show that phi maps roots of this polynomial f to other roots of f. So to see whether that's true, let's suppose that r is a root. In other words, f of r equals zero. This is the definition of r being a root of f. Given that r is a root, our goal is to prove that phi of r is also a root. Well, what that means is we want to prove that f of phi of r equals zero. And we just proved that f of phi of r is equal to phi of f of r. So this statement is true if and only if phi of f of r equals zero. But we know what f of r is because we assumed that r is a root of f. So this inside is just a zero. And now we're asking whether phi of zero equals zero, but because phi is a homomorphism, that is always going to be true. And therefore we have found that f of phi of r equals zero, which means that phi of r is a root of f. So we have proved all in all that if E is a field extension of f and f is a polynomial with coefficients in that base field, phi is an automorphism of the field extension E over f and r is a root of this polynomial, then phi of r is also a root of the same polynomial. In other words, if we're considering a polynomial with coefficients in the base field, then an automorphism of a field extension will map roots to roots.